Hey what is up guys and welcome back to Predatory Exotics. We've got another episode of our Monday series where we talk about different sized tanks and what different reptiles, amphibians and invertebrates you can get in them. On today's video is going to be about the Exoterra Habosphere. This is a slightly more unique tank that you might not be able to find, but if you do have one, we hope to give you some ideas of what different species you can keep inside it. This tank is obviously a lot different to the standard Exoterras that are front opening and they come in a pretty standard upgrading size. This one is a pretty unique size. It is 45 centimeters long, 30 centimeters deep and 30 centimeters high. If you want a full review on this tank, go check out the Exoterra Habosphere review that we did. But on that video, you can check out all the different features that this tank has to offer. And as I always say, this video isn't going to be a conclusive guide of all the different species you can keep inside this tank. These are just a few of our suggestions for what you could put inside it, but not every single species you could possibly put inside because we'd be here all day. One thing to note before we do start talking about the different species you can get inside this tank, this tank has no locking mechanism. It is a top opening tank with no lock. So you are going to have to be careful of what species you can put into it, that they can't escape out of the roof. The other thing to note when picking a species for this tank, this tank comes with built-in LEDs on the roof. There's nowhere to put your UVB bulb or your heat lamp. So you are going to have to choose a species that doesn't need UVB and can either thrive at room temperature or with a heat mat attached to the sides, back or bottom of the terrarium. So if we start talking about the different reptiles you can keep in this size enclosure, if we start talking about snakes, snakes are escape artists and seem to manage to find their way out of any enclosure. Obviously this one doesn't have a locking lid, so you are going to have to be very careful about what snake you put inside it. It's obviously going to have to be a smaller size snake, such as your Kenyan sandboa or your hognose snake. These will go great in this size terrarium with a small heat mat on the bottom of the enclosure. You are possibly going to have to weigh it down for the hognose as they might climb up to the top of the enclosure. You have to worry about this less with the sandbar as they'll be in the substrate most of the time. Unfortunately with this tank you can't really keep many reptiles in it because their need for UVB wouldn't be met. Some people say that you can keep certain species without UVB as long as you're providing the best nutrients and supplements that you can provide. We don't want to recommend any other reptiles that would go inside this tank. The only reason we recommend your snakes is they get most of their nutrients from a whole food prey such as a mouse or rat. This will provide them with the nutrients that they would have got from the UVB bulb. On the other hand, this is a great tank for your amphibian species that don't need UVB. The UVB would be actually harmful to their sensitive skin. So this is a great tank for them and will cover some of the different species that you can keep in there. One of the most popular frog species out on the market at the moment is the Pac-Man frog. You could keep this happily, especially if you have a smaller specimen, all the way up to adult size. That as they are sit and wait predators, they don't need a lot of space and you could keep it great in this size enclosure. They have lots of different morphs available and they are one of our favorites here at Predatory Exotics. Some of the other fat frog species would also go great inside this enclosure, such as the tomato frog or the false tomato frog. They're really cool species that would go great inside this tank and be a beautiful display species. Some of your other terrestrial frog species, such as the Madagascar burrowing frog, there's a few different species of this and they're actually one of the ones I'm looking in to get into soon. They're quite a small species, so you could keep two or three inside this enclosure. As well as the bumblebee walking toad, they're very unique species and something we'd like to keep in the future. If you want a slightly more active amphibian species, firebelly toads are a great option for this tank. They're a more active species, so you'll get to watch them move around the enclosure. The habosphere is actually watertight, so you can fill it with half substrate, half water. And have a nice land and water area for your firebelly toads to move in and out of. Keeping on the firebelly theme, you can get firebelly newts, which are also really cool. You'd keep them in a similar sort of setup with a 50 water, 50 land ratio, similar to the firebelly toads. And another newt species that is really cool found in Europe is the marbled newt. These green and black species with an orange stripe are really interesting and something we hopefully will find in the future and possibly keep in a tank like this. So we've covered your frogs, toads and newts. Now it's time to talk about salamanders. Salamanders, I think, are a really underrated group of animals in the reptile hobby. There's so many different species from all around the world. They don't need a lot of space. They don't need a high temperature because a high temperature can actually be fatal to these sensitive animals. So you can keep it at room temperature or with a small heat mat and they'll be perfectly happy inside this terrarium. 
species such as the marbled salamander, the spotted salamander, and the fire salamander, which is one of our personal favourites here at Predator Exotics. They're really cool species that do well at room temperature and the enclosed glass of this enclosure means that you can keep a high humidity and they'll be nice and happy. The only one that might be a little bit too big is the tiger salamander. You might want to keep this as a smaller salamander but you will need to upgrade it as it gets larger. So now that we've covered all the amphibians, let's talk about all the different invertebrates that you can get inside this tank. This tank is perfect for invertebrates as you can keep a small heat mat and you can turn on the LEDs when you want to rather than keeping the harsh lighting on them which not necessarily all invertebrates like. I'm a massive scorpion fan and I've had multiple successes with different species inside this tank. I've kept Asian forest scorpions, desert hairy scorpions and the Tanzanian red claw inside this tank. There's loads of other species to choose from. You've got your European scorpions, your North American scorpions, loads of different stuff that you could fit inside this tank and hopefully ones that I will keep in the future. Similar to scorpions, you have your camel spiders and your vinegaroons. These are also great species to put in this tank. They won't climb the glass and they'll stay on the bottom of the enclosure and be a great display species. And if you want to take it one step further, move into the tarantula world, you can get a lot of terrestrial tarantulas inside this enclosure, such as the Mexican red knee, the desert blonde, and the white knee tarantula. These are all great starter terrestrial tarantula species that you could get inside this tank. Now, if you don't want to go as crazy as getting scorpions and spiders, you can go for some of the slightly more chill animals, such as the millipedes. You could get giant African millipedes, bumblebee millipedes, fireleg millipedes, rainbow millipedes. There's so many different colours and variations to get out there, and they're nice and docile, easy for kids, and they're a lot of fun to watch. So many different bugs you can keep inside this enclosure. You can keep your Madagascar hissing cockroaches that are really popular and a nice easy pet as well as a lot of beetles. You can keep your sun beetles, flower beetles, or if you want to step it up a bit, get a stag beetle. These are a great display species that you could eventually breed inside this enclosure. I know this tank is a little bit more difficult to find species for. I hope this has given you a few different ideas of what different species you can keep. Obviously it is going to have to be limited to your amphibians and your invertebrates because you don't have that UVB or top heat capability. You have to keep it to room temperature or heat mat animals that don't require that specific lighting. So if you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment down below what you'd like to keep in your exoterra habosphere, or if you do have an exoterra habosphere already, comment what you keep inside it. Don't forget to subscribe to Predatory Exotics, as well as going over to Instagram to follow all of our daily updates on all of the tanks and the species that we decide to keep in them. I really hope you're enjoying this series, as well as our podcast and Friday feature series. We'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.